Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant. Power by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Showmont, where we practice facts over feelings. I'm in a pissy, pissy mood right now. It's got nothing to do with the rant I'm about to drop. It's about the fact that the Yankees blew a 5-3 to three lead in the bottom of the ninth inning. <laughs> Man throws a freaking cement mixer. When people are looking for a fastball and you throw a cement mixer, you speed up their bat and they park the ball in the stands. And that's exactly what happened with two outs. And then the Indians, I'm sorry, Guardians, India, it'll always be the Cleveland Indians to me. Go on to win in the bottom of the 10th inning on another two run bomb, on another cement mixer right down the middle. Hanging sinker that didn't sink. And if it doesn't sink, it goes bye bye. So now we have a two to one series and I'm in a pissy mood and I have to vent some frustration. I am probably going to do a video on that mess tomorrow because I am not emotionally stable right now. Nonetheless, thank you for your continued support of our channel. I am just going to jump right on in on this. And if you have not subscribed yet, please do subscribe to our channel. Come on now, the podcast on YouTube and subscribe to my other channel, Rudy's Rant on YouTube, where I am dropping lots of reaction videos and some different stuff going on over there. All that said... Let's jump on in. The Unrivaled League has announced a TV partnership with TNT Sports. A multi-year media partnership beginning in January 2025 when the league kicks off or tips off in Miami, Florida at a location that has still not been released. As a born and bred Miamian, And living in South Florida, I can think of a few locations where this might be, but they dropped an image of what the court will look like, which gives you gives you views of what is basically a, for lack of better words, a court that you might play on at an L.A. fitness. Check out the court, which basically shows that people will be shooting three point three point shots from half court. Literally, you won't even have to step past half court if you were Caitlin Clark. You could literally shoot the ball from right over here if you're shooting over here. It won't be a logo three. It would be a, a, a I mean, it, this whole this whole concept to me is unbelievably ridiculous. It, I I mean, I don't know where this is going to be. Obviously, it's funny that you have these two right here playing in the finals and they're, so I guess, friends and all that good stuff. But what's intriguing to me is how small this – I guess they forgot to put the nets. I guess there won't be any nets. Maybe it looks like a real park. Um, but I guess that's for the artist who designed it to be spoken to because that's kind of embarrassing. Nonetheless, this is the court. Are they running it with a full width of a court? You can't tell. Yeah, this thing actually has space on the sidelines. So you're going to – you're gonna run a three on three on this. I don't know, man. This is just this is some some schoolyard park BS. As if we don't see enough missed layups as it is, we're gonna see a lot more of that. But let's get off of this. We don't. Who cares about the court? That is the court. Where is the where are the games to be played? I'm gonna speculate. My speculation would be a potentially practice facility at the University of Miami. Um, but that would might be a problem because they'll be in season. Another possibility, you can't do it at a high school because they'll be in season. I, I can only uh, – that's the problem with, you know, the specifics of this is they're running games I think I saw Monday, Friday, Saturday, or something like that, whatever. And the only place I can think of, would be the James L. Knight Center in downtown Miami or the Hard Rock in Hollywood or but they said Miami, so I can't presume Hard Rock. And then finally, the Radis, what we used to call the, the Radis and March, the Miami Convention Center, the, the Miami whatever market where is by it's by the airport on 72nd. You have a lot of um you have fights there, you have I think you've had concerts. There's been some concerts there and stuff like that. Definitely have been fights there because I've been to a fight there. 
So I can imagine having like a hall like that. I, I don't know what they're going to seat. I can't imagine they're going to be seating more than like 500 to 1,000 people for this event because they have to, they do have to, you know, keep costs reasonable because they're already going to be spending a fortune on salaries on players who don't generate viewership as Caitlin Clark is not currently in the mix. But today, or I'm sorry, yesterday, they announced a partnership with TNT Sports. I'm floored by it, but there's a few kinks to it and a, th- a couple things to look at, which basically tell you that TNT Sports probably, they won't admit it, probably didn't pay $1 for this. They didn't pay a dollar because it has no value to them. According to this, this is a report from TNT Sports. Unrivaled uh, have reached a multi-year partnership beginning January 2025. 45 plus regular season games from inaugural season to air across TNT, True TV, and Stream on Max. TNT Sports will be an equity partner in the new league. That is where the details, and the minutia lie. If we want to go a little deeper into this, we can take a look at their press release, <clears throat> which really details this situation. Now, this is where I have questions. If you have given away equity in your league that has not made money, so the investors are giving away equity to TNT Sports, how much equity? Television is the only thing that can make this survive. If they play it without TV, no one will see it because it'll only see a few, maybe a thousand people. They're doing this on some makeshift, bogus looking court. It's hard enough watching WNBA basketball. This is second rate basketball. This isn't real basketball. Three on three is not basketball. That's shit you do at the park, that's shit you do at LA Fitness. That is not something that people typically would pay to see on pay to see in person or on television. In fact, if it was such a money making endeavor, the big three that Ice Cube runs and owns would probably be played in front of 20,000 people. But it's not. They see a half filled, a quarter filled arena. Typically, they play on half court. And they play to a point total, whereas this is being played 10-minute quarters like the WNBA. But you gave away equity to your league for television rights. I got to say, did you give away everything? How much did you give? Uh, it, it is. What is the value? I don't think they got one red cent. And that's my opinion. I don't know for sure. I don't know. I don't. No, and I don't know. As part of the media rights partnership, TNT Sports has agreed to invest an undisclosed amount in Unrivaled. You know what happens when it's typically undisclosed? It's zero or very, very little. <clears throat> They're giving you television. That's what TNT is giving you. Turner Sports is giving you television. When I read this, I it kind of makes me laugh because... Just the statements. Are, are, I'm fl- David, the uh, sports media titans, David Levy, co CEO of Horizon Sports and Experiences, and John Skipper, spearhead of the media rights negotiations. Both HSC and Skipper have invested in the league. Now, I'm sure they got some cash then when I read that because I hadn't read it at all yet, but I would think that Skipper and Levy, who are experienced in this, would probably get something, but I don't think it could be that much. In fact, the TNT Sports here has a long story history of unparalleled coverage and production in both pro and co- college basketball. Here's what makes me sad. TNT is going to go from having the NBA to having unrivaled. I know this is the final year for T- the NBA on TNT, but you want to replace it with unrivaled on TNT? And you think it's going to do the even remotely close to the numbers? I just don't buy it. I don't buy it, and I don't buy it, and I don't buy it. 
they can distribute this across every TNT platform. I do not think it will make one bit of difference. It is hard enough drawing people to watch bad WNBA basketball. Now you want them to watch bad three-on-three -three basketball. They still haven't filled the roster yet. There's still four empty spots. And guess what has been announced? It's so cute. Because you know how they told us how insignificant Caitlin Clark is? You know how they reminded us of that constantly and let us know that Caitlin Clark doesn't matter? According to the Clark Report on Twitter X, the newly founded Unrivaled League is expected to be in a full court press in an attempt to secure Caitlin Clark for their inaugural season. Fresh off securing a 45-game contract with TNT, they'll likely have more to leverage in an offer than previously. Let me tell you this. I hope Caitlin Clark says no. I want to see them survive without her. I want to see what they can do without her. If they shock me and survive one season of this without her, I will give them a standing ovation. But I don't think it's anywhere possible that you're going to pay these women a million dollars a pop. A mil I'm sorry, 150000 minimum a pop. With people making five hundred to a million, five hundred thousand. You think Angel Reese is going to get in this crowd for five hundred grand? I don't think so. So they're going to be paying her more. They're pay they'll be paying people at different levels. If I'm Caitlin Clark, and I'm even remotely considering this, which I don't think she truly is. I think she really wants a break. I think she needs a break. But if she was to truly consider this, the response would be, "I come for nothing less than ten million dollars. Nothing less." Zero less than $10 million. That's where I would start my number. That's where I would finish my number at. Because I'd probably start at 20. And we could negotiate this bad boy to 10. But you're not. But you're not. What you're not going to do is you're not going to sit here after you've disparaged me, disrespected me. And again, I'm speaking as if I was Caitlin Clark. Belittled me dismissed me, ridiculed me, and everything you can think of to, dis to, to, to tarnish my reputation. You've accused me of being a racist, of someone who promotes racism amongst her fans. You've, you've gone out of your way to say that I can't play. It burns your blood, burns your blood that I'm here. I'm here because I'm white. Like, one thing after the other. There is not a player who has gone out of her way to be welcoming to Caitlin Clark in the WNBA. Even to the point that the WNBA media just insulted her by not having her on every single all WNBA first team ballot. In fact, one completely left her off the ballot. So there's no way in hell. I, I, I mean... <clears throat> I mean, I'm just scrolling through this crap right here, but I, I am wholly irritated and frustrated, and I just think it's a big-ass joke that after all the shit they done spoken about this woman, that they're going to sit here and be begging her to come play. I would tell them to kick rocks. Show me that you can do it without me, because you guys have all been more than willing to tell the world, tell the world that I am not the reason. I am not the reason for why people have been watching this sport. It is funny as hell to me. Even Wednesday night's game with the Lynx and the Liberty, they drew a record one for what says <clears throat> averaged 1.39 million viewers, surpassing Sunday's game at 1.35 million. In fact, I would say that that's actually a drop. Because they did 1.35 million against the NFL. I think that number is actually more impressive than the number they did on Wednesday. Which I will do a video on that game before tomorrow. Because I that game, for what people tried to make it seem like it was, the game was terrible. The game was terrible. But people don't know why. They just saw a close score. Most people didn't see the game. Only 1.39 million saw the game. Yet so many more are talking about it as if they saw it live or saw it at all. 
But when you look at it, yes, they went up in number. Congratulations. They still have not busted 1.5 million. I don't think they can have a chance to do that unless they go to a game five. I really believe at this point that the series will end tomorrow because I think the Lynx blew it, blew, blew their opportunity. I could be wrong. We'll see. We'll see. But I think that the Caitlin Clark should let these women crash and burn on their own. Do not save them. Do not do it for them. Let them show you that they can survive on their own. I don't think this league gets through one full year, potentially. Well, maybe because TNT is now involved, but I don't think this league sees a second year. It's like when you get equity of something, equity of what? Equity of what? How does this league make money? How will this league make money? On ad revenue from TV for people that don't watch this game? You really think that you're going to draw 1.3 million people to watch three-on-three full condensed court women's basketball? This is the next level of a gimmick. It's a gimmick. It's not real hoops. You don't even have the best player in the league. And in fact, I thought this was half-court basketball initially. I think Caitlin... Clark would murder these broads in this type of environment. A shorter court? My God, she'd be getting these girls layups over and over again. There'd be, there'd be no defense in this crap. Three on three? There'd be no defense. None at all. And they can't make layups when they don't have defense right now. I, You know, when you look at who, who's playing in this thing, they're still missing four people and, you know, yeah, I, I they need four more, which means that they're holding out that 30th spot, praying to God that Caitlin Clark changes her mind. I don't think she will, and I hope she doesn't. But this unrivaled sack of how dung horse manure is going to crash and burn. This is another example of the, the this culture of wokeness, which I hate using that terminology, but it's making people who are otherwise intelligent and brilliant at what they do, it's making them become stupid. It's making them overlook the reality that for 27 years, the WNBA has been a colossal failure economically. It's been a, le a leader in loss. Not a lost leader, a leader in loss. A lost leader helps bring business to you. You're willing to lose here to win here. You're willing to lose money here to make money here. At, most businesses have loss leaders. In my company, we do certain things for a, a price here, but then we do that for that with the hopes of this. And that goes in any situation, any situation in business. So, th but this is not, it's not that because there's nothing. What else are you trying to achieve? This is a league. It's going to be a leader of loss. They're going to lose their shirts, in my opinion. We will see if I'm wrong or if I'm right, but at the end of the day, you're looking at a situation in which TNT probably didn't put that much cash into this thing. They got equity in a league that's going to not make a dollar. I mean, unless – who the hell is selling ad space? I, I, I mean, XFL crashed and burned. The USFL crashed and burned. XFL crashed and burned a second time. It crashed and burned a third time. And you want to pay these people upwards of $5 million plus in combined salaries for 30 players? I just think that this level of – I'm not going to say inclusivity because I, I don't think that it, this is a matter of inclusivity. This is a, a matter of women are – not, not women, but – the WNBA, they presume, is hot, but it's not really hot. It's one player. And the numbers show you it's one player. And without that one player, nobody gives a shit. Regardless of the WNBA finals ratings, who cares? Who cares? She, the, that, the WNBA finals ratings are, are, are a pro, are byproduct of Caitlin Clark. If you don't know that, then you're delusional. It's a byproduct of her. She brought the eyes to the league that actually made certain people stick around to watch. I can assure you that for all the people that I know on in my podcast and who comment that I'll say I'm not watching this shit. I promise you that there are many Caitlin Clark fans who are watching this shit because you actually have a matchup 
with the exception of Brianna Stewart, who is trying to make the news this week with, with some bullshit. I mean, just bullshit, in my opinion. You have a team of, I mean, bluntly white women who play for Minnesota. Well, they're almost all white and or white or mixed. And you have New York, who's led by two white women. Um, and they have three of their five stars are white. You don't have the same level of vile coming out of their mouths like you did from Asia Wilson. Although I think Brianna Stewart's coming close now with some of the, the fact that this thing popped off about the death threat the week of the game, like the week of the series is just a little bit much to me. Again, she used the word platform, which automatically tells me this was a political situation. Um, nonetheless, this was a this is a byproduct of Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark got people to watch. Caitlin Clark introduced people to the WNBA, truly introduced people to the WNBA. And what that does is you feel like you've invested so much time in watching her that you want to see who wins. And that's perfectly normal. Did I think this thing would do 1.3, 1.4 million? No, I never thought it would. They surprised me. Congratulations. Is it a big, in the grand scheme of things, is it really a big number? No, it's a championship series. They should do better. But because it's done so poorly for so many years, people celebrate small victories. So congratulations. Show me you do, one, do 1. 1.5 and I'll really say something. And that will still be less than game one for Caitlin Clark against the Connecticut Sun. Let me know your thoughts on Unrivaled. What do you think of this TNT deal? Is this a big sack of potatoes where it's basically you have you, we, we're giving you our league for rights to broadcast? I'm curious. What do you think about that? Leave your thoughts in the comments. I greatly appreciate you. Be sure to go subscribe to Rudy's Rant on YouTube. And, uh, of course, if you haven't done so already, subscribe here. Really appreciate you. Facts over feelings. Come on now.